safety third. Do I look like your Uncle Bob? Hello, tourers! Today, I got some homemade tools that I built many years ago that are very useful for me. Perhaps they would be for you, and you will learn how to make them for yourself if you wish. So, let's get started. I call these things here tool carts. The main reason I built these years ago was for doing carburetor work. If you got, uh, I want to just take the top off a carburetor or something. You have all them little trinkets and stuff that could fall and get lost forever. So this way you can just sit right under the hood, take the car top off the carburetor and set all your pieces on a tray and you never lose any. Or if you just want to take the whole top off or the whole carburetor off, then you're all set too. Now this is one of the many uses. These get used pretty much every day. If you're not servicing a customer vehicle, I'm using them for my own projects here where you can hang stuff to paint it or after you did paint it, you can use it to hang your parts on. Now another thing that I've used these for is when I redid the house. But anyway, when I redid the house, the kitchen cupboards. It's late at night, you don't have somebody really to help you and I want to get things done. So what I would do is the lower cabinets weren't in the house. So I'd set the uppers on here, have everything all marked and aligned, and you could just set your cabinet right on top of these, set it to the height you needed, and anchor it yourself without having a second hand. I got, I got to show you this, one of the other uses here. This is called a poor man's laptop. Uh, years ago, before I had a laptop, I finally broke down and bought a refurbished one, but anyway, <laughs> You could put this on for engine programming on the cars, where I write to the engine computer and make changes. And you could just slide this right inside the car door, the door open, and then plug everything in, and away you go. Yeah, you can't go for a roll ride with that, but uh, it worked pretty darn good for being a low budget operation. Now, whenever I'm working on small engine stuff, and you're kind of low to the ground, I also use these for that, where you can adjust it way down low. Set all your stuff on here, and it's always there when you go to reach for it again instead of rolling toward the drain, which I don't know why, but I find that kind of irritating. <laughs> now these are all built from scrap steel from the steel yard, the drop-offs from the factories and stuff. You got to get there early in the morning to get the good stuff. And a lot of the pieces that I found were even just the right length for this, very few cuts I had to make. Well, they didn't have this square tubing in any length that I did need. I was wishing for longer, so I actually had to weld two pieces together here on these. Uh, the tin, that was just out of some other sheets that I obtained another day. And then I just, if you got a steel workbench like this, this is huge for you can do bending without even having a bender. Uh, there's other guys who got videos on how to do that. No big deal. I just welded an end plate on here. No, I couldn't, they didn't have any collars, which I needed for here to go over for the right length. So I made these and then cut them and then welded them in right here. I just, you heat them up and you bend it around. You weld the nut on, that's your safety lock. Now you can release it and it stays there because of the weight of the tray. And then if you want to lift it up, you can, yeah, it's going to be hard to one hand here, but anyway. Yeah, you lift it up, it stays there and then you just finally relock it where I got the 3 8 bolt cut off while the nut, no biggie. The uh, feet pieces, these were all the right length and whatever that I tacked on there. I didn't have to touch them other than drilling the holes for, I think it's a two inch caster I got on these things. And then they had these little cut off triangle nabiscos, put them on there, perfect. And uh, so you don't have a sharp edge on here. Uh, this is door guard molding from stuff back in the 70s. This was real common. I got a roll from the body shop yet. It's slit. You can just pry it open a little bit, put it on your sharp steel edge, and then you got a non-sharp steel edge. Got a little piece of angle iron underneath to reinforce it, just to make it a little bit stronger. Now, get you some dimensions quick here, in case you'd like to build one of these. It's two inch square tubing, eight inch ball. 57 inches tall right there. Tray is 31 inches long, 14 inches wide. I made the original one was a narrower, but I didn't care for that. Uh, foot here to be stable, 31 inches by 29. So 
there. Now you've got everything you got to know if you wish to go build your own. No, nothing too exciting here. This is a parts wash tray. Uh, what I did was just some fairly thick tin, and then I rolled the edges and hammered them flat so you don't have a sharp edge. Because that door guard molding, I don't think that stand up to this room right here. And uh, epoxy primed it with the catalyst, so then when you when you get your lacquer thinner, your parts of paint don't come off, of course. And uh, this comes in handy when you got a bigger transmission or a big strat engine. You don't want to throw a parts washer, you can start with this. And uh, there smaller parts in the parts washer. But, uh, good shoe! <laughs> good shoe! But anyway, I'll show you what else goes with this piece here. You want to save some money? I'll show you what I got next here. Alright, here we go. I bet you know what this device used to be. Make sure you paint it black if you do this. But anyway, uh, what I did was I got a volume control valve on it here. You got your quarter inch copper and reduced all the way down to your little carb cleaner nozzle thingy. And I put min mineral spirits in this and it works real good for parts cleaning. Now, the other thing it's good for is if you've got a bunch of brush you want to light up, take out your leaf floor. Oh man, you can have an inferno in seconds. So let's show you how this thing works. Got here now is you can fill it and you spin the stop off and put your funnel on there with your favorite beverage, wash solvent, lacquer thinner, whatever you like on it. Put your nose, plug right in and give it a charge. Plug it and you're ready to rock. So you grab your handy dandy widget here and you can adjust your nozzle however you want, adjust the volume, let it rip. So, once it's empty, all you got to do is, to speed up the process, just dump the air charge, spin the top off, get your funnel off, refill it, pull the top back on, charge it again, you're rocking. Too simple. Save you some money. Way cheaper than brake cleaner. <laughs> oh, crazy. I almost forgot to give you the dimensions. So, here you go. Two and a half by 30. Five, twenty. Break it down. Okay, another homemade tool. Not spectacular on this. Vice grip with two three-quarter inch angle irons welded on it. Uh, three and a half inches long, but uh, this comes in handy for doing bends on tin and stuff. Yeah, snow plow just noogied my mailbox again, so I had to go out and square it up. This worked pretty good for that. But uh, it gets used periodically. Not the most famous tool on the premises, but I thought I'd show you that. I gotta bring this one up. I've seen videos, they got videos on these uh, dent puller things, which are great. You can use them for pulling your nails out on your shed when you want to relocate the door, which I did where you don't touch the tin. But you gotta have a fresh end on the grip, on the vice grip itself. So, Take note on this. Everybody's welding the shaft of this onto the vice grip. Well, when the vice grip turns into crap, when the jaws get salt, what do you do? You gotta cut it off and redo it. Well, if you weld it onto the adjuster here, all you gotta do is take that screw out, get your new vice grip, screw that into that one, and you got your fresh vice grip. All right. People that normally watch my videos through the years, I know you see me sitting on my bench, and it had to make you wonder, why is Jeff painting these up like this? Let's get to the punchline here. Years ago, in the early 80s, you get an American car in here. Half the stuff is metric, half was American. You gotta put a clutch in a front wheel drive car. You're laying underneath all these wrenches. Well, you know from memory, some are metric, some are not. So you spread a color when you got all your crap weighing under your car and spread a bolt, you know what's what before you can grab it. Now, say for example, we, uh, oh, the, uh, the red ones, primer red, them are even numbers. The white ones are odd numbers, so that's what this is all about, kind of standard. So like, 
when you look at the tools the way he, you know, a number of metrics and a number of Americans, so you throw them in the designated drawer. Show the time saver. Okay, tubers, as I always do, I wander around on my videos. Non related, but hey, faucet. These always leak on the shaft here. You got that oakum string in there, you gotta periodically tighten it, jam that down. No good. So, what I do, fuel injector o ring fits perfect in them. Let's put that in there, tighten it up just to the right tension. I have never touched that for years, ever since then. Don't throw that old faucet away. Another money saving tip passed along to you. Well, hey, tubers, I hope you enjoyed what I posted for you here. Hopefully it helps you out, gives you some ideas for creativeness. Hope to see you back here again. Take care, tubers. Bye-bye. Here's our new project here that we've been working on. It's a 1982 MX-80. I purchased this bike new in 82. It's getting a little skimpy on the power. We're going to restore this guy now here, make her look like new. That fuel tank has not been repainted, by the way. New piston, rings, repaint the head, go through the carburetor, all the nice DTLA stuff to make it all much gooder again. Uh, it didn't have no lights on it or nothing. And uh, what I did, I put a, a charging coil in the crank and no voltage regulator. So what I did is I loaded the circuitry down with some heavy lighting no voltage regulator needed. So I got my rear license plate plastics made up here now on this and the 250 this is all done as far as I'm concerned now. So got the mirrors on and uh, all little biscuits that need to be done for the finals. The plastics on this uh, I scuffed everything down real good. They have uh, a door panel paint that I've used in the automotive industry for plastics you know your vinyl or whatever back thing call it. Uh, anyway, that's what I used on there. They got You put on an adhesion coating first and then you do your paint and then I did a clear coat but it's all special paint for your plastics so hopefully it don't crack or booger up or whatever but yeah other than that uh, oh my god what a fun ride this is. I really enjoy it. So I just thought I'd show you what I've been up to. Oh, hope you folks enjoyed the little bit extra here. Gosh, I'd like to see you back here again. Thanks again so much for all your kind thoughts. And, uh, take care, folks. Yeah. Bye bye.